We're here on the road out of the town of Ras Al Ain. And as you can see, it is a chaotic situation. The streets, roads just choked full of cars filled with families desperate to get out of here. None of them understanding exactly what is going on, what has happened, what the intention of this Turkish military strikes are. We saw at least six big plumes of black smoke with our own eyes, at least one building that appeared to be on fire. And these people are now fleeing to try to get to safety, but they don't know exactly where safety might be. And let's just take a talk and ch chat to these people quickly. Assalamu alaikum, marhaba, keep going. Min wain kun? Hey, ana asifi, ana asifi, akid. Khaifin, Yani, are you afraid? Khaifin al atfal. They're saying that they're frightened for the children, and you can imagine why. Look at the sky, it's thick with black smoke. There have been strikes for the last couple of hours. Kem infajarat kan? Kutir. Kutir. So they're saying there were many different explosions. Menakasab or menakayara? Menakasab. She's saying there were many explosions that was coming from shelling artillery. They're now trying to get out. But the Arabi went through here, hala? And they don't know where they're going or where they might be able to sleep tonight. Well, Clarissa Ward is with us now live from northern Syria. And Clarissa, as we report in the last few hours, the ground offensive has begun. What are you seeing? What are you hearing on the ground? Uh, well, it's a very different picture from what we saw earlier on, those images that you just played, chaotic scenes, hundreds and hundreds of civilians pouring out of the town of Ras Al Ain shortly after uh, a number of Turkish artillery strikes on that area. Now things here are a little bit quieter, but we are hearing from Syrian Democratic Forces. Those are the largely Kurdish fighting forces that some kind of a Turkish ground offensive has begun and that their Syrian defensive forces, uh, Syrian democratic forces, are trying to resist that offensive. We haven't heard any more word about casualties, but what's been notable, Issa, uh, about this offensive so far is the scale and the scope. We had imagined that this would be really focused on a, a sort of initially quite narrow part of the border between the towns of Tal Abyad and Ras Al Ain. It's about 100 kilometers wide, so it's not actually that narrow. Um, but we also heard of strikes taking place in Kamishli that we drove through earlier on today. That's hundreds of kilometers away uh, from that area where this offensive was presumed to be concentrated. So the question many people now have is what happens? What's next? Where does Turkey expand to? How quickly? How deeply? And will anyone in the international community come to the aid of the Kurdish people after so many Kurdish fighters have fought? and died uh, doing America and Europe's bidding try to fight this war against ISIS, Isa. Mm -hmm. Clarissa, is it possible for you to tell at this hour whether Turkey is taking care to target fighters as opposed to civilians? Is that something that you can tell us about? <clears throat> It's always very difficult in the, in, in the sort of fog of war, Cyril, to know exactly what is being targeted. We certainly don't have any indications that there have been civilian targets. At the same time, these strikes are falling on towns that are populated by many civilians. And so invariably, you do have civilian casualties. According to Kurdish authorities, uh, at least seven civilians have been injured, two of them children, two civilians killed. Uh, we saw some images being shared on social media that we haven't been able to independently verify that appeared to show the body of one man by uh, the roadside after a strike in the town of Kamishli. So essentially, whenever you have strikes on, uh, on densely populated areas, even if the targets are military, it's almost inevitable that you see uh, civilian collateral damage and civilian casualties. And the real fear here is that if the Turks continue to press in uh, with some some kind of a ground incursion and that if that ground incursion is met with fierce resistance or frankly any resistance from Kurdish fighting forces, that means you're only going to see more kinetic activity, more fighting, and that inevitably means more civilian deaths.
Uh, Clarissa, before you go, just have reports some news breaking into CNN. The Turkish Defence Ministry uh, is saying that its armed forces have hit a total of 181 targets in Syria target, belonging yeah. to a terror organisation. Before uh, we played a small clip, uh, just before we came to you live, and you were talking to a group of women, and this mass exodus, this fear they might be facing, where are they going to, Clarissa? Where are they fleeing to? Well, that's the real problem here, Isa, is that there isn't exactly a humanitarian corridor open to whisk these people away to uh, some kind of a safe haven. This is Syria. This is a war zone already. These people have been fighting and dying for years. And so when they try and get into their vehicles or on foot, as we saw many of them as well, to flee the violence, to flee the bombardment, and to flee these strikes, they do so with a very scary reality facing them, which is there isn't anywhere safe to go. There isn't anywhere obvious to go, because even if you try to avoid, uh, if you're, you know, a member of these Kurdish fighting forces or living in areas that are controlled by them, even if you try to avoid the buffer zone that Turkey has talked about trying to clear, this is still a very dangerous and complex part of the world and part of the country. You have ISIS sleeper cells in parts. You have the regime of Bashar al-Assad in other parts. So this is not a straightforward scenario. And and it's a nightmare scenario for civilians, Isa. Yeah. Clarissa Ward for us there on the ground, the only U.S. network on the ground in Syria. Thanks very much, Clarissa. A tense afternoon of airstrikes and artillery barrage around the town of Talabiab, where we were standing uh, actually on the Turkish side of the border in Akchakle, followed up by, as night fell, the Turkish Defence Ministry saying that its ground troops have entered now uh, northeastern Syria to the east of the Euphrates River, territory held by Syrian Kurds. It's unclear how many Turkish troops have gone in, unclear what their objectives are or necessarily where they will be moving, but the tweet from the Turkish Defence Minister said they're accompanied by something called the Syrian National Army, which is Turkey's nomenclature for Syrian rebels. We saw some of those ourselves actually down at the border, driving up and down the border wall, one of them waving a Syrian rebel flag out of the window. These are backed by Turkey and part of Turkey's message here, which is to say that they're taking the land off the Syrian Kurds, that the Syrian Kurds kicked ISIS out of, and returning it to who Turkey believe are its rightful owners, the Syrian uh, Sunni Arabs who originally lived there before ISIS took hold. Old. But that's for the longer term discussion. Now, the question is, of course, the humanitarian impact of Turkish shelling and military intervention and exactly the full scope of what Turkey has planned here. A senior advisor uh, to President Erdogan said the White House was aware of what the full scope was, but still, we heard Donald Trump today try and tread in both camps, saying he thought that the mission was a bad idea, but he hadn't endorsed it, but also hoping Turkey would remain humanitarian in its aims and take a hold of the ISIS prisoners that are currently in Syrian Kurdish custody. How that happens in a war zone, I simply don't know. But we are now in the opening phase of what could be a week's or maybe months long uh, campaign. It simply depends on how deep into Syrian Kurdish territory President Erdogan wants to send his forces. He talks about 18 miles possibly once. That could take a very long time along a border of that particular length. But now there are Turkish ground forces with Syrian rebels working alongside them inside of Syria, casualties on the side of the Syrian Kurds, it seems, continued uh, airstrikes being used, and it's fair to say pretty much remarkable global condemnation from Turkey's NATO allies uh, for this particular move, but still Ankara pressing on ahead regardless. Nick Payton-Walsh, CNN, Urfa, in southern Turkey.